good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to the webinar conducted by dsij i am karan bhojwani and i will be moderating this session it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our today's speaker mr prashant shah who is also a expert panel member at dsij he is one of the few professional with number of coveted and re renowned designation in the industry he has been awarded chartered market Te technician cmt and a cft by cmt association and international federation of technical analysis uh, respectively prashant is a leading practitioner of one dimensional noiseless chart in india and today he will be deep diving into the topic of pnf which is point and figure charts so let's begin with today webinar you can post your queries in the chat box if you have any during the session and plus at the end of the session prashant will try to give answer to all the queries of yours so prashant over to you you can begin the session thank you karan for the introduction and uh, hello good evening everyone and uh, so we are going to discuss point and figure charts today and uh, uh, i i assume that you are not really uh, uh, you don't have you don't even know the basics of pnf so we'll discuss it right from the beginning and uh, we'll also discuss trading strategies using this charting method the idea is uh, uh, to make our trading more productive more effective and uh, this is one technique which is uh, very uh, i've been practicing since many years and uh, it's a very uh, uh, interesting technique and uh, it can really remove lot of noise from the data from your you know uh, trade signals and uh, it can uh, you know uh, reduce your number of trades making your overall trading more productive and effective so with that motive in mind uh, i mean we have developed lot of strategies on it and uh, i am going to discuss the trading strategies also but before that uh, we must discuss this technique the basics of this because you know when you discuss something on candlestick chart on technical analysis you may not need to you know understand much about how candles are being uh, constructed they are kind of uh, straight forward but here there is a uh, you must understand what these charts are what this technique is about and uh, then you will easily understand the trading strategy so here the uh, the critical aspect is basics once you know the basics then you will easily understand rest of the things so my request is to pay attention when we are discussing the basics of this uh, method and uh, then uh, we will discuss about trade strategies also and i'll keep asking questions when we are discussing uh, the basics and other I mean, so this presentation is divided in three or four parts the first is discussing the basics then uh, the uh, parameters of the charting method and what how to plot them how to, what what you should uh, select while plotting the chart or what are the parameters then the basic trading strategies and then th there are advanced price patterns or the more effective price patterns or the trading strategies so i'll begin the presentation uh, i hope you guys can see my screen yes prashant it is, it is visible yes so this is uh, a very interesting offer to all the uh, uh, event attendees from the lal street and uh, it's a special offer for you all you'll get uh, 40% flat uh, discount if you'll use this coupon code which is mentioned here on the image and uh, the offer is valid to uh, today only uh, till midnight so uh, i mean it's a very uh, uh, great opportunity to offer to all the attendees so it would be uh, i mean it's you should you should uh, definitely grab it all right so let's begin with the presentation uh if if you may not i mean you if you are not aware i have written four books on the trading the techniques and uh, you know trading market so my first book was on point and figure 
which was published in 2018 and uh, then i wrote on renko chart also and then there's relative strength and the last book which published last year was uh, on trade psychology so uh, and apart from this also i've done a lot of work on various methods strategies of and uh, you know option strategies or you know different trading strategies algo trading and all that and uh, uh, with all that with all the experience i can definitely uh, say that uh, you know the point and figure has got a great potential and it can really do wonders if you understand the how to use it understand the different aspects of using it and uh, if you actually uh, uh, learn the if you are clear about how these charts are constructed and what they show then you can do lot of work which uh, will put you in a category of people who are not not many who are using it but some who are using it really very effectively so uh, when we look at candlestick chart or bar chart which a uh, lot of people use and uh, they are two dimensional charts there is uh, price on y axis and time on x axis so what in in simple words if you are looking at daily candlestick chart if uh, yesterday was monday today is tuesday and even if price doesn't move much there will be a candle which will get plotted on tuesday so these charts move as time passes by irrespective of uh, movement in price so this is the nature of this chart they are two dimensional point and figure charts are different they uh, if if i talk about p and f they are kind of uh, uh, these these are one dimensional chart we only consider price here and if you study the history of this they are one of the oldest charting methods in fact the oldest western charting method there are evidences that you no know, charles dow used to use this method they, it was known as a book method then so i mean there are various uh, stages of development of this method it was earlier known as book method then it became a figure method and then it became a point method and all that so there was a popular book written in 1933 by d villiers and uh, and it was a very i mean that is when a lot of uh, others came to know about this method and then there was a brilliant book in uh, uh, late 50s by uh, aw cohen which uh, you know in a way changed this method upside down and you know it was a, a wonderful work in this field and he introduced lot of other uh, strategies and uh, what happened is because you know that time there was there were no computers people used to maintain this chart uh, on a piece of paper and you know they used to uh, draw them and uh, uh, so it was like for any charting method people used to maintain it but when uh, in when computers came and people started plotting chart on computers then what happened was candlestick chart uh, people came to know about the candlestick chart they became more popular this method was still uh, practiced by a lot of people uh, using absolute charts but now with the uh, uh, because now the you know uh, technology is not a problem now we can plot log charts i'll discuss what the log charts are and because of that this technique is uh, you no know, i mean it, it has become really very effective and you can do lot of things using it so here we use vertical plotting i mean what what was the the thing is in the candlestick chart we have this horizontal way of plotting it i mean you you get a new candle uh, you know so we plot it horizontally in the case of point and figure we plot it vertically so the plotting is vertical in nature uh, you have when price moves you move it uh, you you plot it in the format of columns and when price changes the trend you change the column and that is how you know these charts are getting plotted i'll explain it step by step how how we plot it so see this is an image which shows two columns in the first column price went from 109 to 116 this is one column in which price was plotted and in the second column it was from 115 it went to 109 so price came down and we plotted it in the next column so this is how we plot 
prices in the point and figure chart i'll give you an example let's say we are tracking a stock which is trading at 100 and uh, this is a column and this is the size of the box so now let us say that uh, uh, we we want to track price only when it moved up by five points five point is just for the example uh, so you understand how these charts are being plotted so if price goes from 100 to 105 then only it matters to me otherwise i will not uh, i don't want to plot the price it doesn't matter so if price goes to 105 then we plot it in the next box above 100 so that is how we plot it because price moved up by five points we plot uh, we mark 105 so the thing is we will mark the price only if it moves by five points and uh, otherwise if it moves by three points four points then i will not really plot it so chart will not move and uh, i will ignore that price move so if, next i will plot only if price goes to 110 so if price goes to 110 then i'll write 110 right so what i'm doing here is i'm trying to remove the uh, price or the data which is which doesn't matter i don't want to look at every small price tick you know i only want to plot when it is it has moved by the criteria that i have decided so then next is 115 if price goes to 115 or above it then only i will plot it so if price goes to 115 i plotted 115 now when i say 115 if price goes to 116 then also i will plot 115 right so the thing is when price moves uh, price is at 110 now my requirement is 115 if price goes to 112 113 114 i'll do nothing if price is at 114.99 i'll do nothing if it is at, at 115 or above it so if it is at exactly at 115 i'll plot 115 if it is at 115 at 116 117 i'll plot 115 right i hope you're clear so if it is at or above 115 i'll plot it now my next requirement is 120 what if price suddenly goes to 125 right so in that case we will plot two boxes one at 120 and another at 125 clear so if price is price goes up and there's a sudden movement and it qualifies for multiple boxes then we will mark all those boxes so what we are doing here is we are marking the boxes when price is moving. So in this case, in our example, price went from 100, and 100 to 125 and we marked it in a single column, in just one column. Right. And uh, now if price goes to 130, we'll mark 130. But if price remains at 125, we will do nothing. The price, the PNF chart will remain here itself so we'll mark nothing if price goes below the previous box which is at 120 if it falls below 120 then we will change the column and mark 120 so if for example if price goes below 120 then we will change the column and write 120 here right because now it is going down it was going up till 125 we marked it in one column now it went below the low of the previous or the uh, price of the previous box will we change the column and mark 120 there right so now if price falls below 115 we'll mark 115 if price goes above 125 we'll we'll change the column and write 125 here okay so whenever the trend is changed we change the column what is the uh, criteria of changing the column whenever price if it price in the bullish column whenever it falls below the previous box we change the column if price now falling down and it is in a bearish column, whenever it goes above the high of the or, or above the previous box, we change the column. So from here, if price falls below 115 at or below 115, if it is at 115 or it goes to 114, 113, 112, we mark 115. Right now, what is happening? The price is falling. We are at 115. If price goes below 110, we mark 110. If price goes above 120, which is the previous box, then uh, the, uh, by definition, it is the trend has changed and it is going up now. 
we'll change the column to you know we'll plot, plot in the next column at 120 so if, if it goes to 120 we change the column and write 120 here now if price let's say it goes to 130 and uh, above the previous stop we mark two boxes and write 130 so this is how we uh, this chart was initially plotted this is known as a figure chart because we are mentioning the figure of every price of every uh, at every box for the stock and uh, it was in initial days you know when people used to stand outside the uh, broker's office and they used to track those notes and uh, on the piece of paper they used to mark the prices so this was the technique to uh, mark the prices when it is going up you write in in the single column and it is falling you change the column then it is going up again you change the column so this is how they were noting it uh, then eventually there were some developments in this because what used to happen is people used to maintain a lot of charts and writing figure every time was also a tedious task plus uh, you could make that job easy so this figure chart became point chart when people instead of you know writing figure every time they made an index at the left hand side and instead of marking they used to just point it you know so a point was it was random some people used to uh, just point it from pencil and you know uh, some people used to mark it with some random uh, uh, stuffs random signs and then there was a usual practice to cross it you know said that cross uh, was widely used and people used to call it point so that point was basically a cross so now that cross became x so instead of uh, marking every time or writing the figure then people used to make an index and then point it so it became point chart right so the figure chart became point chart now what you the, the problem with point chart was you look at the chart overall you don't even uh, realize that whether price is going up in that particular column or going down so uh, to solve this problem they used to uh, cross mark when price was going up and circle when it is coming down right so that circle eventually became oo and that cross became x so x we plot x when price is going up we plot o when price is coming down and this charting method is uh, widely practiced today this is known as point and figure charting method so this is point and this is uh, instead of uh, you know uh, uh, cross mark we use circle when price is coming down so this circle is now o so x is bullish and o is bearish when we plot point and figure chart now easily you can i mean we have discussed this example you can easily see that uh, when price is uh, uh, in the column of x it went from 100 to 125 and then when it went to 115 we changed the column and marked o then it went to 130 we changed the column and marked x so uh, this is how the p and f chart is plotted and this has been the journey of p and f chart figure chart point chart and now point and figure chart uh, so this was in, in this example, the size of the box was five points. The difference between two prices was five points. It could be any other thing. I mean, you can decide one point, two point, ten points. Uh, what should you use? We, will, we are going to discuss that. But as an example, it was a five point chart. And whenever price moved by one box, uh, as in, when you are at 125 price went below 120 that means it moved uh, or it changed the trend by one box so we changed the column again it changed the uh, 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 the requirement was one box so when price went, went from 115 to 120 it moved by one box and so this method is known as a one box reversal all right so five box is the size that we are using and the reversal requirement is one box so this chart is known as 5 into 1. 5 is the box value and 1 is the reversal value. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this method is known as 5 into 1. 5 is a box value and 1 is reversal. Now let me give you one more example. So you'll be very clear. I am spending some more time in how this chart are, charts are being constructed. And then I'll show you some live charts. So that at least you'll get the idea.
And once you're clear with this, I'm sure you'll be easily able to understand the patterns and the trading strategies. So let's see, this is a price series and we want to plot a point and figure chart. It is at 100, 1000. Now uh, the requirement is five box. So when you have 1000, uh, when price moves by five point, you'll mark an X. So at 1000, you mark X. At 1003, you do, do nothing because the requirement is five points. So at 1005 only, we will plot X. So in third case, price went to 1006. So we plotted X, right? At 1005, because price is up by five points. In the fourth price, price is 1009. So our next X will be at 1010 only because the requirement is of five points. So we do nothing here. At the fifth price, price went to 1011. And so 1010 is crossed. So we marked X at 1010. At the sixth price, price at 1016. So we mark X at 1015 because 1015 is crossed. On seventh price, it is 1021. So 1020 criteria is also fulfilled. So we mark X at 1020. Eight, 1026, price is above 1025. We mark X at 1025. Now, Think what if next price is 1035? That means you'll get 1030 filled and 1030 also you are going to fill. What if next price is 1015? If price falls to 1050 from here, it, the current price is at 1025. It, if it falls to 1015, we mark O at 1020 and another O at 1015. So uh, let's see how it uh, moves further. Ninth price is 1031. So we mark X at 1030. Now we are clear that if price goes to 1035, we will mark X. If price goes below the previous box, which is 1025, we mark O. So we know we are clear about when the next X will come and when next O will come. The 10th price is 1024. So we mark O, we change the column and mark O at 1025. Next price is 1019 that is below 1020, right? So we fill that uh, box also. So we mark O at 1020. Now our next requirement is 1015 for O. The 12th price is 1016. So we do nothing here because 1015 is not achieved. 13 is 1023. 13th price is 1023. Now we are here. We plot O at 1015 or we'll plot X at 1025. This is the price. At 1023, we'll do nothing. Right. So we will we'll ignore that price also. It The 14th price is 1028. So it has gone above 1025. So we change the column now and mark X at 1025. Then it is 1033. So 1030 is also marked. And then it is 1038. 1035 is also marked. So this is how we plot. Last price is 1038. But my last Filled box is 1035. So there is a possibility that there is a difference between the current price and the last price that you see on point and figure chart. You know the reason, right? If price goes to 1040, if it crosses that, then we'll mark another X at 1040. If price falls below 1030 in this case, then we'll change the column again and mark O at 1030. So you must have noticed that whenever we change the column, from X to O, it, it, it always gets plotted from one box below. And whenever it is from O to X, it always gets plotted from one box above. Right? Because here in this case, price goes, if it remains at 1020, why do I change the column? I change the column only if it goes above the previous box. So there will always, there's all, you'll always notice in the point and figure chart, but whenever the uh, column is changed from X to O, it is always from one box below. Whenever it is changed from O to S, it is always from one box higher. So I'm, I, I, I hope that you have understood this construction. Here the box size is five points. The reverse is one. So this is five into one chart. Now th this, uh, if you have understood till now, there's just one thing that you have to know and you'll be clear on how these charts are plotted. We discussed about one box reversal chart. We used to change the box when the uh, uh, when price 
changed the trend changes the trend just by one box now instead of one box we will discuss three box reversal charts because three box reversal charts are being widely used they are very popular and they are very effective as well so in the same example i'll explain how three box reversal charts behave so let's say we are at 1025 in the one box reversal chart we change the column and mark o if price goes below 1020 which is a previous box this is one box right in case of three box reversal chart our reversal requirement is different so this is one 1020 is one 15 is two and 10 is three so if price changes the trend by three boxes instead of one then we change the column so 1020 is one 15 is two and 10 is three if price goes below 1010 then we will change the column and mark o we will not change it at 1020 or 15 or 10 or or uh, 11 or something if it goes at or below 1010 then only we will change the column right so let's look at the next price series if next price is 1031 we mark x at 1030 now if it goes to 1035 we'll mark another x what is our criteria for reversal three box so from 1030 what will be a reversal price 1 2 and 3 if it goes below 1015 then we will change the column see it's a simple math if it is if the reversal is the uh, the box value is 5 a reversal requirement is 3 so 5 into 3 15 points 1030 minus 15 points is 1015 so if it falls below 1015 then you change the column now next price is 1024 so you do nothing uh Yeah, so this is one thousand thirty, and the your yeah, next sixteen price is one thousand thirty eight. So we mark X at one thousand thirty five. Now in ninth price, the yeah, our reversal requirement now from here is one, two, and three, one thousand twenty. If it falls below one thousand twenty, then we will change the column. Ninth price is one thousand thirty one. We'll do nothing. Now we know the two things. If price goes to one thousand forty, we will mark X. If price go, if price goes to one thousand twenty, we will change the column and mark O. So, the next price is one thousand forty one. So price goes to one thousand forty, we will mark X at one thousand forty. Right now the reversal requirement is one, two, and three. If price falls below one thousand twenty five, then we will change the column and mark O. Next price is one thousand thirty three. We do nothing. Then one thousand twenty six, we do nothing. Twentieth price is one thousand twenty-four. Now price has changed the column, so we mark O at one thousand twenty-five. From one thousand forty is it came to one thousand twenty-five. So now what has happened is price has changed the column from up to down. Now we are in the column of O. When we are in the column of O, when price is falling, now if price goes to one thousand twenty, we we will we don't need three boxes. For next O, because now we are in the column of O. This is known as a continuation plotting, because we are already in downtrend. In a way, it is price is falling. So for the next O, we just need one box. So if price goes to one uh, thousand, uh, goes below one thousand twenty, then we will mark another O. So right now it is at one thousand twenty-four. Price is one thousand thirty-six, so it has not gone below one thousand twenty. But now what is the requirement of reversal? from here also it is three boxes so whenever we are plotting the reversal it will be a three box so first box is at 1030 second is at 35 and third is at 40 so 1 2 and 3 if price goes at or above 1040 then we will change the trend and mark column of x right so the 20 second price is 1019 which is below 1020 so we will mark 1 o at 1020 Now we will mark another row if price falls below 1015, and if price goes above one, two, or three, 1035, we will change the column and mark X. Next price is 1032. We do nothing. 24th price is 1046. It is all the way up to 1045. We change the column and mark X. So whenever the trend is changed, we fill all three boxes, right? And uh, even if it is, uh, and we will not change the column unless three boxes requirement reversal requirement is met, right? So uh, this is 
a five box and three reversal so this is known as five into three point and figure chart now see this in this in the previous example when we were in the column of x price went from 1000 31 to 38 we marked nothing in between i mean the, the point and figure chart was marked at 1030 we did nothing at 24 19 16 23 because price was not moving to 1035 and it was not moving down also below 1050 so we did nothing our next marking was at 16 price so price did not even move during this period when price was just hovering around you know 1030 and uh, uh 15. So when price is moving in a particular range, the P and F chart will not even move. And when chart is not moving, there is no question of trading based on chart, right? So what happens is now see the this entire 24 price series data. If I plot a line chart, it looks like this. Okay, this was an uptrend, then there was a correction, then again an uptrend, then there was a downtrend, then a correction of the in downtrend, then there was a downtrend and the uptrend. Now, if you see the same price movement in point and figure chart, it looks like this the column of X, then the column of O and then the column of X. So it's a steady uptrend, then a downtrend and then uptrend, right? So this is how it looks. It removes a lot of noise from the data and it uh, presents a picture. This is a price only, right? But price presented in a different format. There's no time. You have an uptrend, downtrend and uptrend marked in this format, right? And this is known as a 5 into 3 chart. So we have discussed the construction part. Fortunately, you don't have to do that. I mean, software, uh, the charting methods are available today. You can just go and plot this on the price, but you should know how these PNF charts are constructed. And that is why I discussed the construction part. And uh, uh, there's a small exercise also, which you can uh, practice. Maybe, uh, uh, I mean, you can take a screenshot and you could do it later. But this is a five into three point and figure chart, which you can plot using this price series. So I'll not discuss this uh, in detail because I guess you have idea. But before I move further, I want everyone to uh, I mean, I, there's a question for everyone. Have you understood the basics and the construction part? Is there any question or query about the, uh, the construction part that we have discussed? Rashanji, there is one question uh, yes, from Gurpreet. Yeah. The question is uh, in trading view, uh, when he is pl plotting the chart of PNF, there is an ATR value 1493 or 3 in zero da, and whereas in trading view, it's 1453. So the question is, what does it imply? Can we change it? Yes, you can change it, but what is it? I'll, I'll explain uh, what is ATR and uh, what does ATR PNF chart mean? I'll explain that in a while. The respondents have said ki they are very much clear with the concept, so you can move ahead. Okay, sure. So I'll move ahead then. Uh, we'll discuss that part also about this construction. I mean, I also wanted to discuss a bit, and I hope that you guys are clear now. And... Uh, so I'll not spend more, more time in the construction part. Okay, Prashant, I would like to interrupt you over here. Uh, a yeah. couple of guys are asking, can you explain the reverse plotting means the downfall plotting when the uh, there is a shift in the price no? on the downwards. So okay. a couple of guys have asked this question and one more there is question from Suresh ji. What if price gaps down by 20 points? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll answer both the questions. So I'll quickly uh, explain it using this exercise only. So there's a price series. Let's say price is at 100 and 106. The, uh, for this example, the box value is 5 and the reversal is 3. So uh, when we are at 100, we, we don't know whether we, we will start from X or O because we don't know price will go up or down. So we'll do nothing at first price. The second price is 1006, uh, sorry, 106. So what we'll do is we'll mark X at 100 and another X at 105, right? Uh, the, then price moved to 113. Uh, so we mark X at 110. Now price moved to 120. So there is a sudden movement. So as someone asked, what if there is a gap down or gap up movement? If there is a gap up, if price was 110 if, and if there is 120, 
will mark two x at 100 and one is 115 and another at 120. So there will be a simultaneous uh, marking and uh, uh, if next price is 112. So our next requirement is 125. So we do nothing here. Now the reversal requirement is three. So first box is at 115, second 110, third 105. If price falls below 105 at or below 105, then we will change the column and mark O. So here in this case, the next price is 112. So we do nothing. Price is 112. The current price is marked at 120 and the reversal requirement is 105. We do nothing. Then six price is 127. So we mark 125 ka x. So uh, we mark x at 125. Now our reversal requirement is 1, 2 and 3, 110. If price falls below 110, then we will change the column and mark O. So someone who was asking about the reversal requirement, if we are here, if price falls below uh, by, by 1, 2 and 3 boxes, then we will change the column and mark O. If that doesn't happen, we, you know, we remain here only. <coughs> so in the seventh price, price is 111. Our requirement is 110. If price falls below at or below 110, then we will change the column. So at 111 also we do nothing. Price remains at 125 only. The box is marked at 125. Then eighth price is 131. So price again went up. It did not uh, fall below 111. It again went up to 131. We mark X at 130. Now our reversal requirement is 1, 2 and 3, 115. If it falls below 115, then we will change the column and mark O. At the ninth price, it went to 112. So we changed the column and mark O up to 115. We did not mark 110 because from 115, it did not, uh, it did not go below 110. It remained at 112. So we marked our last box is 115. Now, uh, if, we, if price goes to 110, we will mark another O. But if, if price reverses by three boxes, which is one, two and three, if it goes above 130, then we will change the column of X, uh, column to X. Price goes to 129. It is not above 30. So we do nothing here. Then price is at 140. Uh, it, it did not go below 110. So we do nothing here. Then price is at 131. Now we change the column from O to X and 130 is marked. So we change the column and marked X. Now our reversal requirement is 1, 2, 3, 115. If price falls below 115, we will change the column. Next ma marking was 121 and uh, we do nothing because reversal requirement is not met. And then at 14th price, it is 145. So we mark X up to 145. So I hope you guys are clear. If there is a sudden gap up or sudden gap down, uh, all the boxes will be marked and you at least know that there is a sudden you know movement in the price how to trade we are going to discuss it and if there is uh, 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 the reversal by three boxes then the column will be changed to o or x so all this you can see in the chart i mean the uh, charting website does all this so at least you should know how it is being plotted in this case we have plotted what we are doing basically is, you know, try to understand this. If price goes to 100, uh, one from 1000 to 1105, uh, so there is a 105 point ka movement in this chart. Now the idea is, I will divide this price movement into equal number of boxes. This move must have happened in number multiple number of sessions. There could be 10, 12, 15 sessions in this. We don't know about that, right? But here we know that price went up by 1000 to 1105 the idea is we are divide this move into equal number of boxes let's say equal number of the 10 point 10 boxes each so each box will have 10 points and there are the, we have divided this move into boxes now these are i, I removed the no, uh, line and now it is from 1000 to 1100 these are equal number of boxes equal number of 10 boxes because this is first box, second box, third box. So we have divided into 10 boxes. Now if I combine them, then it becomes like this and it is a column. So this is a end of chart. Now instead of these boxes, we just mark X there and there is an index at left hand side. So this is how PNF charts are plotted. This is what we do with price in PNF. 
we divide it in the equal number of boxes and club them and plot them in a single column and when there is a strong trend in one direction we see the price move in one column itself whenever there is a change in the trend we change the column right so when the price is moving up we plot it in the column of x and when it is moving down we plot it in the column of o so what are the properties there are fixed size boxes right the plotting is vertical in nature in one single session only there are multiple sessions right so it is not that you have one column on every day you can have there can be multiple sessions in single day so this is one day which can have five session 10 session or maybe one month or one year you don't you don't know right so uh, there will be multiple sessions in one column itself and there is a start uh, the start period is the bottom and the uh, end period is top so this is how pnf charts are plotted right this is how they look and uh, now what happens is when you put the cursor on any chart you see the low price and the high price when you put the cursor you also get to know when that low price was marked for in this particular example the low was on 5th april 2015 the high was marked on 15th april 2015 the low price was 95 and high price was 110 so from 95 to 110 it remain in this one column for 10 sessions for 10 days right so it there can be multiple sessions in one column now let's have a uh, see see this example this is a nifty ka column of 10 points 10 absolute points price remained in uh, from 7560 to 7910 in this column itself it was from 11th april to 18th april so almost uh seven eight session price was in the same column there were 36 boxes in this column right because 7560 7910 boxes and 10 points each so for 360 points price was in a single column only right so can we say that price went there was a 360 point move without even a 30 point reversal why i am saying 30 point reversal because the box value is 10 points right if price moved or changes the trend by 30 points we will change it to column or there would have been a column of o right in this between this so it, it was a single column that means price did not even change the trend by 30 points and so so when there are stri- strong or long columns it shows that there was a strong trend or there is a strong trend and uh, that's a very important information we are going to discuss more about it but now coming to uh some time frame you know so we plot like daily chart weekly chart weekly candlestick chart monthly candlestick chart you can plot daily weekly monthly point and figure charts also and uh, you can plot it for intraday also so i recommend plotting daily chart you know you have a very important tool called box value here like we discussed about five points five absolute was a box value and 10 is like you know you can increase it to 10 or you can reduce it to 1 you can change that box value now think what will happen if you increase it if you are using a point and figure chart with five points if you use 10 points what will happen the columns the data will get compressed there will be lesser columns and uh, you know the data will be clear if you use 20 points you know the columns will get reduced further so you can increase the box value or reduce the box value instead of changing the time frame so you can always plot weekly and monthly but i strongly recommend plot daily point and figure chart and increase the box value if you want to look at the bigger picture and on the intraday plot 1 minute point and figure chart 1 minute point and figure chart is way different than 1 minute candlestick chart in candlestick you get new candle at, uh, at every minute in point and figure you don't get new x or x o at every minute you uh the, the one minute is a data frequency if you increase the box value at times what happens is price remains in the same column or in few columns uh even you know on during the entire day even on one minute so you can do positional trading also using one minute time frame and uh, uh instead of plotting weekly monthly use daily there's one other big advantage when you use daily instead of weekly and monthly you know what happens in candlestick chart when you plot let's say weekly candle the chart bahut acha lagta hai when you use week, weekly and monthly you see clear trends and uh, clear pa- price patterns 
so if i am following a weekly candlestick chart and there is any, any trading strategy on weekly chart i cannot take trading decision on tuesday wednesday or thursday because candle is not locked it is still moving right uh when will it get locked on the friday or at the end of the week so i have to wait till, till the end of the week for price you know to the candle to complete and that gives a lot of uh, uh, trouble at times right because you don't know whether the candle will today i can i am looking a strong bullish candle tomorrow it can turn out to be you know uh, there will be an upper shadow the price the candle can change by friday same will happen in point and figure also you are looking at column of x on tuesday and wednesday you if you you take some trade decision and by friday the column of x vanished because the price did not uh, the <coughs> the chart was not complete so there is lot of impact cost which gets added to your trading uh, uh, or investment and to save on that you can plot daily chart and uh, that will say help you save impact cost now i'm coming to box value uh, which is a very important thing and someone also asked about the atr so there are three types of box values one is absolute which we discussed 5 points 10 points 15 points these are absolute numbers which you can use and plot point and figure chart using these numbers another is atr atr is an indicator called uh, i mean it is average to range which is a uh, which is an indicator for volatility and uh, you know uh, now what happens is i'll show i'll show one uh, example i'll share my screen and show you how it is being used now uh before i discuss that see when you plot point and figure chart let's say this is nifty these are the box values now we discussed about 10 points nifty right this is a nifty point and figure chart with 10 points now we'll discuss uh, uh, remaining things but you know now you know what this column of x is you know how they, this is being formed and plotted this is column of uh, o this is x this is strong column of o if you if you just look at this data this so column of o was from 25 jan to 27 jan in 3 days the count is 50 point that means there was a 500 point move in this single column then now it is turned to column of x and now right now there is a column of o so this is how it looks and uh, <clears throat> so you know how this 10 point chart has been plotted will we are going to discuss how to use trading signals in this how to trade using this chart but now there is one method called atr so what happens is if you plot candlestick chart of let's say nifty and if you use atr average to range as indicator let's say a uh, 14 period which is always by default uh, in in the point and figure chart method when you use now if you if i put the cursor the atr of nifty today is 233 points right so the atr value is 233.12 now if i plot uh, nifty and i use atr 14 period my box size will be 233 point look at here so one box is of 233 points so this is nifty atr point and figure chart so i hope you have understood how this atr chart is been plotted for the atr you use the you you calculate the atr of nifty can on candlestick chart the atr value of indicator and you use that indicator value to plot point and figure chart so the theory was that you you know you use the volatility ka value and then use it as a box size for the point and figure chart but now the problem here is you, the your one box value is 233 points now this is a three box reversal chart when it, will it change after 233 into 3 you know so after 700 800 points it will move uh, it will 700 points uh, for to change the column how will you trade that so it's practically very difficult to trade using atr and another problem is atr itself changes today it is 233 tomorrow it will be different so when the atr changes chart itself changes and so a lot of people don't understand why the chart changes and they think that it was repainting which is happening and uh, that makes it difficult to you know use this chart so uh, i recommend that avoid using atr 
uh, or uh, the absolute all you can use but there's a beautiful uh, technique which is of log chart so you can instead of using bo both this you can use log chart now what is the problem with absolute value uh you if you are plotting nifty you can use 10 15 20 what if you are plotting acc what if you are plotting lnt what if you are plotting uh, any other stock like reliance the value will change so and and what happens is uh, stock changes the territory today it is trade let's say today this nifty is trading at 18000 it was it was trading <coughs> uh last year at not 12000 so you, the stock uh, the index in stock changes the territory so that value of absolute for example if stock is trading at 100 i plot 10 point it becomes 10 point 10 percent of that value you know if i'm plotting one percent which is one uh, rupee if stock goes to 500 that one point is very small movement if stock goes to 1000 that one point doesn't even matter so i have to change the box value with changing the uh you know when when price changes the territory so to deal with this problem we can plot log point and figure charts so log is let's say one percent. So price will uh, the box value will always remain one percent, whether price is at one thousand five hundred, eighteen thousand, one lakh, wherever it is, it will always be one percent of the last price. And that's the best thing about it. This chart never changes. I don't have to give you several rules that you know, iska does point use karo, iska beast point use karo. You don't have to do that. You simply use percentage, and you know, uh, you plot that. So. Uh, uh, instead of uh, absolute, we use log box values. And uh, so, for example, you 1%, the plotting, the method of construction remains same. If price moves up by 1%, we plot X. If it reverses by 3%, we change the column from X to O. Right? So, this is how we use log box values. So, that's what I recommend. Time frame, I recommend daily and one minute. And these are the box values that I recommend. If you're using stocks, use 0.25% for short term on daily chart. See, this daily, weekly, monthly is like how we use daily, weekly and monthly candlestick chart. So if you want to use daily point and figure chart, use daily time frame 0.25% into 3. If you want to use medium term, like weekly candlestick chart, don't change the time frame to weekly. Use 1% into 3 on daily time frame itself. And for the long term, use 3% on the daily time frame. So this is the box value that I recommend for stocks and the index is different for index. Instead of 0.25%, you can use 0.10% medium for, for medium term use 0.25% and for long term use 1% because the volatility of index is different. So this you can use on daily time frame chart. When you are you plotting mid cap, mid, uh, uh, mid caps performed really well on point and figure chart, you can do wonders on mid cap and small caps on P and F chart. And the time uh, box value that I recommend is 1% and 3%. So now I'll discuss how we can use this box value and trading strategies on PNF chart. <clears throat> so the property of PNF is after X column of X, there will always be a column of O. After column of O, there will always be a column of X and so on. So there are some patterns which gets produced. For example, this is a column of X turned to column of O and followed by column of X. When in the current column of X goes above the high of the previous column of X, whenever one new box is marked above the high of the previous X, this pattern is known as a double top buy pattern. So double top traditionally, what is double top when two tops are marked at the same level here, what happens is price goes above the previous top and marks another X. This pattern is known as double top buy pattern. This pattern is absolutely objective in nature. For example, if you see this, <clears throat> chart the double top buy is marked here price went up further in the same column but the column of x is marked here right same is now see this chart here there is a double top buy marked here when price went above the previous column of x so it went up in the same column but it was marked here so when you know you get the breakout here it is a bullish breakout because price is above the previous x so it's a bullish breakout. It can go further in the uh, uh, coming sessions, but the uh, pattern breakout is marked here. So in this the double top buy is marked here because in the current column of X price is above the high of the previous X. In this column, the double top buy is also marked because price is above the high of the previous column. 
here there is a double top buy here also there is a double top buy here also there is a double top buy in this column it's not a double top buy because price is below the high of the previous column in this column also there is a double top buy in this column there is not double top buy because price the x is almost at the same level so whenever the uh, high in the current column of x is above the high of the previous column of x it is a double top buy pattern so there are only two possibilities on every column either it will be a double top buy or it will not right so i mean I, I, it's a very complete uh, totally objective in nature uh, it's not that you know in this particular pattern someone thinks that okay there is a double top buy and someone thinks there is no double top buy there is no ambiguity it's a complete objective formation if there is a double top buy it is a double top buy right same way if price falls below the bottom of the previous column it's a double bottom sell pattern okay so it's a bearish breakout price falls below the previous bottom it's a bearish uh, sign so <clears throat> uh, same like double top buy in the ev every column either there will be a double bottom sell or not whenever price falls below the previous bottom it's a double bottom sell so in this column there is a double bottom sell here there was no double bottom sell because price was above the previous column right here also price was above the previous column in this column price went below the bottom of previous column so there was a double bottom sell so here there was a double bottom sell here there was a double bottom sell so this is a series of double bottom sell in the last column there was no double bottom sell because price was above the bottom of previous column so this is how double top buy and double bottom sell patterns are marked these are very basic point and figure price patterns but lot can be done around this basic patterns so <clears throat> i would want you all to count the double top buy and double bottom sig uh, sell signals in this chart i hope you have understood the logic whenever the column of x is above the high of the previous column of x it's a double top buy whenever it is below the previous bottom it is double bottom sell so if you can count the number of x uh, number of double top buy and double bottom sell i cannot ask you all but uh, if you can quickly mark it and i'll i'll do that for you <coughs> so see there is one first double top buy marked here because x is above the previous high second double top buy marked in this column this is second third double top buy is marked here in this column this is th third so there are three double top buy signals and then there is no double top buy pattern after that because no column of x is above the previous column of x so there are three double top buy patterns double bottom sell there is no double bottom sell here in this column there is a double bottom sell because price fell below the bottom of previous column so this is double bottom sell one here also it is below the previous bottom two three Four, five, and six. There are six double bottom sell patterns in a row. So in this particular chart, there are three double top buy and three double bottom sell signals. Why I asked you to do it is, I mean, this is a very basic pattern, and it, you just consider it as a very basic method of trading. So we always know the level of pattern in advance. The, we also know the stop loss, and there is a trailing stop loss technique. Why we know the level in advance? Because let's see the the price pattern is here. when will double top buy pattern get marked if price goes above the previous high so when we see the x here there will be a double top buy pattern that that will get marked so what is that price level 1050 so at 1050 there will be a double top buy pattern marked so if price goes to 1050 it is a double top buy pattern now if i i, I ask you when will the double bottom sell pattern get marked if price falls below 1025 right so if we get oh at 1000 this is a double bottom sell if price falls below the previous bottom then we mark double bottom sell so at 1050 one uh, at 1020 there will be one o so if it price fa falls below 1020 then there will be a column series of column of uh, series of o's in single column and double bottom sell pattern will get marked so double top buy at 1050 you always know the level in advance when double top buy will get marked when double bottom sell will get marked so you can always follow it as a stop loss if double top buy is your entry pattern double bottom sell can be your stop loss if double bottom sell you can short there and double top buy can be your stop loss this is a very basic thing which you can do with point and figure and you always know the level in advance so you can put the stop loss accordingly now uh, 
this is objective in nature you also know the risk right so for example if you know that uh, buy is coming at 1050 and sell is coming at 1020 you always know the initial risk right so you can always see if the uh, trade is affordable or not you can always count and then you can pl uh, place the order so this is double bottom uh, double top buy the double bottom sell in this chart will marked below this o now what happened is price went up then it turned to column of o and then column of x now in this particular column of x now your exit signal is below previous o so the stop loss is trailed from here to here now if price falls below this o it will uh, the double bottom sell signal will get marked and you will change the call uh, you, and and you will uh, exit Prashant, I would like to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. actually, because the slide is in the cloud system, uh, people are not able to view, uh, see the cursor pointer. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, so it, it would be better if you can uh, point it out whether it is the third, fourth, or fifth column, okay. or the large X column, or a short red column, O column. Okay. Because uh, when it is in cloud, the pointer is not visible. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I hope you. Uh, no, I, I, I got it. Okay, so uh, uh, in this large column of X, there is a double top buy pattern, and uh, you know in uh, the stop loss will be the bottom of the previous O. So it's a double top buy pattern, and then price uh, there was there is a significant price movement. Uh, then there is a small column of O followed by X. So it's a double top buy. Now what happens is in the earlier column the double bottom sell signal was placed below the uh, previous bottom and in the next O the stop loss is uh, you know uh, we can trail the stop loss to the previous O so uh, till your double bottom sell pattern is marked I mean you can trail the stop loss to and, and as long as price is making higher bottom your stop loss is getting uh, trailed to previous bottom of the previous O so that's how you can trail the technique also this is a very basic way of you know, riding the trend, you no know, kind of uh, staying in the trade. I know that it's very difficult to stay in the trend. Uh, theoretically, it looks very good on the chart, but you can't, you know, a lot of people can't do it practically, but you can do it uh, very, uh, you know, it's a very, end of charts are uh, very simple to, you know, view that kind of formation. But I'll, I'll explain some other techniques also to trade this. Now affordability is like you know you get double top buy here there are only three boxes in the previous O in the first image you can see there are only three boxes in the previous O so the risk is very uh, minimum or small so you know it's the that trade that breakout is more affordable in the second image the column of O bit, between two X is bit, bit <clears throat> large so the risk initial risk is high so you know that you know if you have uh, two stocks where double top buy pattern has got marked you can you know that you know you can prefer one because the risk is low so you can always filter the patterns using this affordability also <coughs> so now what happens is you know the, the, this is known as a fresh and continuation for example you know you, you see that bottom first uh, red horizontal line it's a first double bottom sell signal in the next column of O, there is no double bottom sell signal. And then in the next O, there is a double bottom sell signal, but the trend is already down, you know. So whenever there is a double bottom sell signal and unless double top buy comes, the trend is down. Once you get a double top buy signal, unless there is a double bottom sell signal, trend is up. So these are the fresh double top and double bottom signals, which you can find, I mean, you can use in your trading and they can be extremely uh, uh, effective. Now the trading rule is, you know, uh, whenever there is an uptrend, you should buy when there is a double top buy breakout. Whenever there is a double bottom sell, but trend is up, you should exit the stock and don't short it. If you are a trader, just <clears throat> exit. If there is a double bottom sell and trend is down, then you short. If you are a trader, if you trade futures or if you're trading options, you can make, create some strategies there. And when there's a double top buy in downtrend, you cover your shorts, don't buy, you know, wait for price to uh, change the trend. Now, how do we know about the trend? I mean, chart analysis is one aspect. Let's make that also objective. So to do that, we, we plot moving average on price chart. So moving average 
you know it's a very simple indicator which you all know when you use uh, a candlestick chart and plot moving average you can use let's say 20 day moving average 100 day moving average 200 day moving average so when you use 20 day moving average you calculate the average price of last 20 days so you can define the number of days and plot the moving average on candlestick chart on point and figure chart there's nothing like day you know in one column there can be multiple days so here you use 10 column moving average so instead of number of days you uh, plot moving average of last 10 columns and that the concept itself is fascinating because you know last 10 columns can have multiple number of sessions you don't even know the number of sessions are dynamic in nature so that's how uh, you can plot last 10 column ka moving average and plot it on the chart it looks like a simple moving average only when price is above the average it's an uptrend and when price is below the average it is downtrend so our double top, double bottom, double bottom cells, uh, the patterns are completely objective in nature. Same way our trend is also objective in nature. So when there is a double top by above moving average, pattern and trend, trend both are bullish, you should buy. When there is a double top by below moving average, pattern is bullish but trend is bearish, right? Same way when there is a double bottom sell signal below moving average, so pattern is bearish and trend is also bearish. When there is a double bottom sell signal above moving average, the pattern is bearish but the trend is bullish. So to, uh, the simple rules could be whenever there is a double top buy above moving average, buy. When there is a double bottom sell above moving average, exit. When there is a double bottom sell below moving average, short. And there is a double top buy below moving average, cover. So these are the very simple uh, rules. I call it setup and you can use it always in Nifty or any other chart. I can tell you that these simple rules can make your tra trading very simple. Even if you're using point and figure, you're using some other method. This will tell you clearly what the market uh, setup is. If your pattern is bullish, that is double top buy and trend is also bullish. Price is above moving average. The setup is bullish. Whenever the setup is bullish, you should look for the bullish strategies or you should buy. When the pattern is bearish, double bottom sell, price is below moving average, setup is bearish. Whenever setup is bearish, you should look for bearish strategies. When pattern is bullish, double top buy, but trend is bearish, it is below moving average. The setup is neutral, the trend is not clear and setup is neutral, you call it sideways or neutral uh, and you should simply stay away or you know, you should reduce your quantity or you should reduce your trading activity. When pattern is bearish, which is double bottom sell, but trend is bullish. Again, setup is neutral. You wait for the uh, pattern to turn to bullish and then buy. So this can become a complete trading strategy only. When pattern is bullish and you are planning uh, to buy, I would recommend that number of O's in that column or the, your stop loss should be very small. I mean, less, less more than eight boxes in particular uh, uh, in the column of O, you should avoid that trade signal. So your risk should always be uh, low, I mean, comparatively, and when your risk is in control and you will get good number of trades, winning trade, your risk reward will be in favor and your overall trading will be uh, more productive and profitable. So always look for stocks having bullish setups if you want to, you know, uh, buy and trade only when the initial risk is affordable. You, you should have some kind of rule for that, like eight boxes or six boxes or something like that. And you can always ride the trend trend uh, ride the trade using moving average or you know double bottom sell signal and so your winning trades will be more than the losing trades and your overall risk reward and uh, number of trades will be very effective so i'll show a couple of examples uh, i'll quickly uh, share the screen and then also ask for the <coughs> queries uh, i'm let's i'm, I'm plotting uh, moving average and color moving average that I recommend this is plotted on the chart and since it is nifty I use point I, I recommend as I mentioned 0.10% so right now what is happening in nifty see this was a trend this is from October uh, 2012 till December 2022 sorry 2022 from October to December this was a price movement 0.1% there was a double top buy the column of X above moving average double top buy this is a bullish set here there was a bearish setup price went below the previous o and we, below moving average so bearish setup right now it's a double top buy and above but it is below moving average so as long as it is below moving average it's a neutral setup it's a it's a kind of 
you know, sideways or neutral, you should stay away. That you can do on any stock, right? <clears throat> For example, I, I just select uh, uh, this is ABB uh, and this is 0.25% on stock. Now, this is a strong double top by above moving average and price has gone up like anything. So that, this, this was a bearish uh, setup and this is a bullish setup. So you can easily uh, plot on any chart and <coughs> you know you know what is happening. Now this is ABFRL. <coughs> I'll plot that again. ABFRL, look at this. Price above moving average, series of double top buy. This is a series of bullish setups. You can buy a double top buy and ride the trend or you can use any other strat uh, strategy also and mix it with this. But this is a series where you will not look for bearish trades. Here, once it uh, fell below the moving average and there's a series of double bottom sell signal, here, this is a complete uh, period when there's, there's only a bearish setup. Here, you will not look for bullish trades. So your job becomes very easy. Now, I just wanted to uh, discuss if, uh, uh, if there's any query or uh, any question or whatever I have discussed so far. So Prashant, there are a couple of queries. Uh, yeah. One is related to moving average. Okay. So what is this moving average? What is the time for, like period of this moving average? So the period is 10 columns. As I said earlier, in the candlestick chart, you can plot 10 day, 20 day, 50 day moving average. In point and figure, you don't have uh, many choices because you plot it in number of columns, not number of days. So one column can have multiple sessions and you plot it on 10 columns. So this is 10 column moving average. I recommend 10 column moving average on all instruments and time frames on point and figure chart. One common question is coming from many of the participants. Uh, is that, uh, is this possible to do plot on trading view? Yes, yes, possible. Okay, okay, okay. How can that be done? Like they are asking, how can that be done? If you can uh, to us. So I, I actually... Uh, uh, Don't use it. I don't use it, but you can always plot it. There are no log box values are not available on trading view, uh, uh, but uh, they can use you no know, uh, the apps. You can convert it into absolute value and use it on trading view also. Okay. But you can always plot moving average, ten column moving average on trading. Okay. So there is one question from Mr. Surendra. He's asking, uh, what is the box value set setting? Can you repeat it again? So box value. Okay. Uh, can you see my uh, slide? Yeah, now it is visible, Prashant. Okay, okay. So I'll quickly go back to that uh, slide where I discussed box value. So my uh, so uh, there are two uh, things. One, the box value for stocks and index. I said uh, the box value should be different for uh, stocks and index uh, because uh, uh, there is a difference in uh, volatility and, uh, you know, the instruments are different. So this is what I recommend for stocks. 0.25% on daily time frame, 1% on medium term, 3% for long term. 3%, 1% and 3% on mid cap can do wonders. And uh, you know, in for index, nifty, 0.10 on daily, 0.25% for medium term and 1% for long term. So this is what I recommend. And uh, you know, as I said, for mid cap, 1% and 3%. And many of them are asking what charting tool you are using at present. So I, I use Definage basically, which is uh, uh, my company only. So you can use TradePoint uh, dot Definage, and uh, you can see the charts there also. Okay. And uh, all these charts are available uh, on that platform using uh, uh, you know uh, absolute value and you know uh, log value. So there is a desktop version and web version also. So I use that. So Prashant, many of them are, I think, uh, new to this concept. So if you can plot the chart from the beginning, like if you can show, help them to show key, what is the value and what are the time frame you are talking about? Because many are confused. If this is a price chart only, then we are why we are talking about time, like daily, weekly, or monthly. Okay. I'll, I'll explain it again. So for example, uh, this is nifty chart and nifty candlestick chart right now i'll go and plot point and figure chart this is converted to point and figure chart what are the settings the time is daily only right now i said this is time independent but 
you can plot daily chart weekly chart monthly chart because in the case of point and figure the time is just the data frequency like in when i plot daily chart i get data the price on daily basis when i plot weekly chart i get price on weekly basis every friday i mean in between price keeps moving but it, it gets found at, at the end of the week same goes for monthly and other time frame when i say intraday intraday on you you can plot 5 minute candlestick chart 15 minute candlestick chart similarly you can plot 5 minute point and figure chart 15 minute point and figure chart now when i say 5 minute point and figure chart we are not considering time how does 5 minute matter because in the 5 minute it is a data frequency after 5 minute i get the price you know so the the uh, column gets locked at the end of the 5 minute within 5 minute it will it will keep moving by the end of 5 minute it will get locked because the data the time uh, uh, the date it's a data frequency that time interval is locked so that's that is why this data frequency is important so you can plot weekly uh, point and figure chart you can plot monthly point and figure chart but this x will get locked at the end of the month you know till then it can keep moving when when we plot daily chart we get data at every day so today when i see this chart it is locked so that is why i recommend using daily uh, uh, time frame so i hope you have understood what is time frame and uh, why we are using this so now what is box value i have explained how the box we use box value how re we use reversal value so uh, when we plot point 10 percent you can change the point we have discussed absolute percentage and atr all these box values when you plot 0.10% it changes to 0.10% and this is how your chart looks so each box in this column is of 0.10% of the price of nifty so this is we have discussed double top and double bottom signal if you go and use single plot uh, if you go to the indicator section and plot single moving average you can simply plot it and you can see it you can go and uh, you know use this tradepointer.definers.com or zone.definers securities all this this charts are free so you can maybe it's a simple free registration and you can use and uh, try this so this is a double top by above moving average and this is a double top by below moving average so i hope this queries are sorted now uh, there is one query from mr rm yangappa box value for 1 minute please can you plot the box value for 1 minute so 1 minute uh, i recommend so this is 1 minute nifty and i recommend using 0.0.05 for uh, nifty it's a very effective uh, uh, price pattern and this is like you know it's a, it's this you can see this vertical line this entire movement is of today so you can see this column of o was price k uh, uh, that was kind of gap down and this column of x o there's no double top buy or no double bottom sell signal in the entire day so for the entire day there was 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 columns on the 1 minute time frame now this is the chart that you had that's the difference between uh, other charts and point and figure charts it completely removes noise from the data it gives you a very clear signal so there is no double top or double bottom today hence there was no trade it was a complete consolidation and this entire six column for the entire day on one minute time frame that's the beauty of this so if you understand the dynamics of this uh, method i mean you can do much more using this the uh, the patterns are very you know uh, clear in nature so i recommend 0.05 on nifty and 0.10% on bank nifty and 0.15% for stocks <clears throat> One one minute time frame. <clears throat> And we can move ahead now. All right. So uh, <clears throat> what I recommend is actually I had <clears throat> uh, many other thing, but I'll quickly uh, discuss one more thing. since uh, uh, people need to understand the basics of it but i'll give you one more idea uh, you know you we discussed double top and double bottom patterns and the setups and uh, how you can use the moving average as trend filtration <coughs> tool and uh, you can 
ट्रेड बुलिश सिग्नल वेन द सेटअप इज बुलिश एंड बेरिश सिग्नल वेन सेटअप इज बेरिश Now, double top buy is a basic pattern. It is of three column in nature. You know, there are always three columns in double top buy. Price goes up above previous high, uh, and there's uh, when there's a bullish breakout, it is a double top buy pattern. It's a three column pattern. Uh, same way, there's a pattern called triple top buy, which is a one, two, three, four, and five column pattern. So when two X are at the same level, and then price goes above it, this is known as a triple top buy pattern. So if you look at the last three columns, they are double top buy also. But when you see the overall pattern, there were there are five prices above uh, the high of the previous two X, which were at the same level. <clears throat> so this this is known as a triple top buy pattern. If you see in this particular example, it gets formed at nine zero six zero. This is a triple top buy pattern. right because there are two x at the same level and then there's a breakout it shows that price was in a horizontal trend and there is finally a breakout this is known as a triple top buy breakout the pattern gets failed if price falls below the lowest o in the pattern here in this case it is 9000 the lowest o <clears throat> so this is a five column pattern you see in this chart marked at green with the green horizontal line that's a triple top buy and it is above moving average so the a uh, triple top buy pattern you can buy there and put the stop loss of double bottom sell uh, in the triple top buy pattern if the uh, trade coming in favor the ratio of trade coming in favor is really high so uh, prashant i would like to interrupt you uh, many yeah. of the participants are asking what is the target probability of triple top breakout buy signal okay so target probability there is a uh, uh, you know actually in point and figure chart <clears throat> no in the point and figure chart there is one uh, uh, technique called vertical count so if you go and uh, you know just plot multiple vertical counts you see these kind of numbers now this these are the target product this is the method of calculating targets in point and figure chart i need uh, more time to discuss this maybe we can do it in the next webinar but this is an interesting way by which you can uh, plot kind of targets on point and figure chart and uh, you know for triple top buy you can simply assume that you know in my book i have given a back test in a lot of patterns if you have uh, uh, and it is uh, you you can always uh, assume that you know if your stop loss length is let's say 1 rupee you can get uh, 2.5 to 3 rupee uh, in more number of trades so uh, you know in triple top buy unless price uh, uh goes below the bottom uh, the ratio of you now achieving 1 is to 3 is really high and at times if you ride the trend using double bottom sell then your risk reward ratio will be very favorable so the way we discuss triple top buy if price falls below the previous two o's which were at the same level the pattern is known as triple bottom sell right and so see this chart for example the price was uh in the third column the price was below the two os at the same level and it it is marked as triple bottom sell in the first there are two examples in the chart of triple bottom sell in the first example price went below uh, price uh, uh went down but it quickly came up also uh in the second example price went down significantly so this the triple top and triple bottom patterns are very uh, nice patterns and if you find it in stocks uh there are good trading opportunities if your initial risk is affordable you can look for the this kind of patterns now see the idea this is asian paint candlestick chart can you see that horizontal pattern of so many candles in the chart the same pattern in the point and figure is simply a triple top buy so this triple top by the box value is 3% i said 3% 1% can do wonders in mid cap the same 3% in, in the 3% uh, chart there's a triple top buy which is a horizontal pattern breakout of multiple candles you can simply scan for this kind of patterns or simply look for this kind of pattern and you get you know so this triple top buy can have months or years of uh, data see this gs uh, gs kick uh, construction see this is uh, also kind of inverted head and shoulder or variation of it it's a basically horizontal pattern simply you can see it as triple top buy in the chart 
so this pattern is applicable on front line you know mid cap small cap and even options there are clear rules for entry exit we are basically playing resistance and consolidation breakout pat uh, pattern no ambiguity it's a very clear and subjective pattern and if price falls below the bottom of the uh, or the lowest two of the triple top buy we can consider it as a failed pattern and exit so you know all these patterns like consolidation cup and handle inverted head and shoulder or complex cup and handle these are the uh, price patterns you can simply see it on point and figure chart as triple top buy so these are some examples you know uh, where you can see this triple top buy very simply marked you can also do it for short term let's say this was a short term chart there was a consolidation breakout and you can see simply see it as triple top buy on uh, point and figure chart so there are some more examples i will uh, this is this is an example on commodities also so some people who trade commodities and currency they can also use this this is on options when you plot options chart i re strongly recommend 3% chart if you are using nifty bank nifty or stock options you can plot it on intraday one minute time frame 3% and this patterns like triple top buy can really do well on this chart see this these are examples of triple top buy patterns so uh, uh, these are some char chart examples and uh, actually i wanted to discuss more pattern and strategies but i think uh, i must give time for people to digest this first and uh, you know uh, and then we, we maybe we can uh, conduct another webinar and discuss the things further is there any question queries we can discuss it now yeah sure sure we, i will let you know the question yeah i would request everyone to post your questions in the chat box if you have any so there is a question from himanshu yeah which says what should be the atr length in nifty and bank nifty ATR, I said, I, I actually don't recommend. But if you want to plot, then 14-day ATR is uh, what you can do. The problem with ATR is it, it, it changes, you know, uh, and uh, with that your chart changes. That's the uh, problem basically. But uh, I mean, if you want to use, then it should be 14 period ATR. 14 period ATR you are suggesting? Okay. So there is one question: uh, Is Renko similar to PNF chart? So in Renko, it's an interesting question. Renko is a bit different. It's an oldest Japanese method, and uh, you know, uh, it is similar in many ways. But instead of in in one column, uh, we plot uh, the Briggs diagonal. That's the key difference. So here, in case of point and figure, we plot it in one column, and in case of Renko, you have diagonal Briggs. Okay. So the only difference is the plotting method. Plotting method is different, and so because the then your appearance is different, so then the techniques of trading are a bit different. But it is also a, a method of you know a, a noiseless chart. Okay, so there is one question from uh, Vaishali. She wants to ask: uh, Can we use it in, in intraday? Please show any trade example like entry and exit. Uh, okay. Sure, I'll do that. So you, yes, you can do it in intraday, and uh, you can use, uh, as I said, uh, one minute time frame, and uh, uh, you can use uh, 0 0.15 percent box value. And uh, I'll show you an example. Now, so for example, this is uh, Adani Enterprises 0.15 since morning. So this is a double top by above moving average. This is kind of intraday trade, and this is double bottom sell below moving average. So here, if uh, I mean this is today's trade, 10th Feb, 12:40, and here you see double bottom sell below moving average. Here you can see triple bottom sell. If you just go to pattern and plot double bottom sell, it will get marked, and uh, triple bottom sell. I'll just mark it with different colors so you get the idea. So this is this is a triple bottom cell. This is triple bottom cell, and price below moving average, and it kept on going down. And here there was a double top buy below moving average. Maybe you can cover your trade here. 
so this is an example of intraday trade and you can you know i mean now you can observe the vertical lines are intraday separating lines this is on one minute time frame which you can uh, see i mean i can share n number of examples and there are more patterns also which we can discuss maybe in next video uh, so prashant the, there was a poll uh, we ran in, at the beginning of this session uh, which was regarding the small cap index and nifty 50 index we were asking like the question was whether would small cap index would outperform the nifty 50 index in the short to medium term what is your perspective on that as the participants are saying 73% are participants are saying that it will outperform small cap index will outperform nifty 50 index 73% participants are saying this so what is your view on this so i'll i'll quickly share one interesting chart uh i think uh, uh, there is an rs chart which uh, you know uh, so this is you know nifty 500 i mean uh, we can also plot it divided by nifty so here if you see right now nifty 500 stocks are underperforming nifty this is nifty mid and small cap 400 index divided by nifty it is just right near moving average if you see overall chart it is more or less moving at par this is nifty small cap 250 index divided by nifty 50 uh, and here you can see it uh, it is just near moving average overall it is still consolidating and nifty mid cap 150 it is still consolidating it has it is above moving average so there is one hope that mid caps and small cap are you know above moving average compared to nifty and they might you know underperform if i uh, it might outperform if i quickly see uh, nifty mid cap point and figure chart mid cap 100 and uh, okay i'll i'll plot not moving uh, the relative strength chart this is nifty mid cap 100 now and if i plot moving average because i have discussed this chart students so i'll show it on chart only right now you know uh, overall chart is kind of bullish it is uh the above moving average for most of the time right now it is below moving average but there is a double top buy signal so setup is neutral okay. if this bottom remains protected and if we see above moving average then there is a chance of outperformance right now it is uh you know uh consolidation more or less all these charts are in a consolidation mode so uh, the only good thing is even after this negative news the market is kind of i mean we haven't seen that kind of fall as yet and so overall it looks okay but nifty and all these indices right now they are in uh, consolidation zone if we see this uh, you know uh, price going above the moving average then i would say outperformance so i i strongly believe in uh, you know trading the charts then trading the assumptions okay, okay. great so uh, i hope every everyone has understood the explanation by prashant regarding the outperformance of nif small cap to nifty 50 index so now prashant there is a one more question regarding itc okay so what does uh, the pnf chart of itc suggest okay great so i'll show it again so this is itc and uh, i'll plot moving average also and uh, yeah so this is this has been you know uh, a steady uptrend now if i just change the box value to 1% as i said for medium term you can see this series of you know it's a double top buy double top buy double top buy double bottom uh, double top buy this bottom was protected there was no double bottom sell this is a complete bullish chart and uh, i mean it's a very strong uptrend now if i look at the larger period if i increase the box value and see major breakouts you know it's a it's a very significant breakout here on double top buy and from the bottom I, there are some more counts which are open so i think the 4 440 is still open so if we continue to see this double top buy i mean there are chances that uh, we will have the direction is bullish all i recommend is trading double top buy signals on lower box 
so the target for uh, rtc is 440 as per the count yes which is open so yes. please note it and there is one more request from kalpesh regarding kpit the stock of kpit what is the outlook for kpit kpit okay. yeah kpit tech so this is a, a three percent chart, which is double top buy, and overall you can see this. It's a very strong bullish chart, and uh, if I see on one percent, it is a strong column of X, which is telling us that there's a strong momentum and a strong trend. And on point twenty five percent, why I'm showing three different time frames, you you, you can you know uh, 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 trade decide your trade strategies based on that. Now you see this double top buy with a very small column of four. So here the risk was clearly affordable. And so when your higher time frames are favorable, when the trend is strong enough, you can trade this small risk uh, uh, patterns. So that's how we should you know, up, uh, create our trading strategies. When higher trend is bullish, you should trade. Uh, you should apply bullish strategies. And I mean, ignore the second call, but 11.35 since open on this chart i mean the, the, there's a possibility of 11 30 11 40 in the coming days but uh, how do we trade this we should simply uh, trade double top buy on lower time frames or 1% or 0.25% box value and exit when there's a double bottom sell or price falls below moving average line so prashant uh, today we are promoting a product which is tas so one of our subscriber uh, has posted in the chat box. Recently, we have recommended Sangvi Movers in TAS. Okay. So the uh, stock uh, was uh, like uh, exited today with a good profit of five five and a half percent in just a couple of trading session. So wow. what is your outlook on that stock, Sangvi Movers? So it was a nice pick, Karan. There's no doubt about it. You can see this. You know, uh, this is a three percent box value. You see the clear uptrend right from you know. Uh, July 2020, the price has been above moving average. Right now, also there is a double top buy on three percent box value, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, here if you see, if I plot by by theory, I'll uh, plot the conservative count. So 415 is still open. Why I plotted? See, there are some rules. You cannot plot it from every column. There are some quali uh, columns which qualify for the count, and here it gets qualified. So 415 uh, seems open. Uh, and trend is up and bullish. So, uh, uh, I mean, this chart is also still bullish. Okay, thank you. So, the count of 415 is still open, open. as yes. Prashant uh, uh, has mentioned in the chart. So, there is one more question regarding MNM outlook for MNM, please. MNM. Yeah. So, it is a frontline uh, uh, stock. So, overall, of course, the overall chart is bullish. It has been above moving average. There was some correction and now it is above moving average and the strong column of X. Let's see it on, since it is M&M frontline, we'll see it on 0.25% box value. And, uh, you know, see, there is a triple top buy pattern here and this column gets qualified for X. So if you plot, you know, there is a triple top buy pattern. Here. And there is a count possibility. So let's ignore the second count. We'll only plot first count because I don't want to give very uh, big targets. But this is 1423, which is open. Price is above moving average. There is a tri triple top buy pattern. Now, if price remains above this you know, top and if there is no double bottom sell signal from here, or if you get another double top buy signal, the tra uh, uh, the chart looks good, and you can trade it for fourteen twenty three. The count is open. Okay, so the count target is fourteen hundred twenty three. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So la last question we are taking up uh, since the time limit yes, has already existed. Existed. We yes. were about to close at seven thirty. So. The this is question from uh, one of the participants who says that what is the target? What is the outlook for Tata Steel? Tata Steel. Since it is point twenty uh, frontline stock point twenty five percent we are seeing. See overall you can see this. Uh, okay, all right. I, let me show the uh, higher box value. So the overall trend you can see this kind of consolidation large O large X large O. There is a strong sharp retracement here, and when you see on point twenty five percent. You can see this uh, strong column of O and uh, it has underperformed 
metal index in a way which is underperforming so right now it is uh, not in a bullish uh, zone or chart is not bullish it is also below moving average and there is also a bearish pattern so it's not bullish right now though i would not say it is completely bearish since it is right like, no overall this this trend has been kind of steady and bullish but it is more of a consolidation in sideways so i would recommend to wait and watch and see if there is any bullish pattern then only trade from here otherwise there are some better opportunities okay okay so i think uh, we should wrap up this uh, session so before wrapping it up i would request everyone if you want to subscribe to our premium product which is tas technical advisory service where we give positional stock recommendation which are also a swing in nature so you can subscribe to this product so this is a slide there is a special offer only for attendees and only for a limited period of time flat 40% off flat 40% off in, on this product so like one of the participants uh, mentioned that he gained good amount of profit in one of our recommendation which was sangvi movers prashant also checked on this pnf chart that the targets are still open uh, 419 is a count as per their vertical column counts so we gave such kind of recommendation which are showing high relative strength and have the capacity to outperform the market so do check it out if the risk profile of the products suits you i think this is the right choice to go for and subscribe this product with a 40% off so thank you everyone for joining in i hope everyone enjoyed this session we are looking forward for your feedback on our social media handles we are on twitter instagram and on facebook as well so we are looking forward for your comments thank you everyone